Es para mí un honor y un placer eh, presentar a Miguel Fernández Félix, que es realmente una leyenda en el campo de los museos en México. Eh, it's not a mistake, I, I, I was saying it especially in Spanish, because some things have to be said also in Spanish here. Eh, it's for me an honor and a pleasure to introduce Miguel Fernández Félix, he's a living legend in the world of the museums in Mexico. He has uh, been almost everything. He was the wonder kid of the Mexican museums, starting when he was 20 years old. Uh, in 20, when he was 25, he was already the director of one of the national museums, Museo del Virreinato. He has been director of Dolores Olmedo, Virreinato again. He has been the director of the Munal, and now he's the director of Palacio de Bellas Artes. Miguel, has, uh, he, Miguel still has the freshness of uh, his start, but at the same time, I guess, in his very kind way, he's a workaholic, uh, meaning uh, he built a new system of information and management of museums that he's applying everywhere where he goes. And uh, Miguel belongs to, to all kinds of international uh, institutions like the art museums, the directors uh, association, and uh, he belongs to the Bissot group. He was explained to me how he was the first uh, Latin American belonging to the Bissot group. The Bissot group is a, a group of uh, around 60 museum directors all around the world, the most important museums in the world, uh, talking policies and what the museum world should be. He's, uh, he's appointed, uh, he's a personal appointed, it's not uh, because the place where he is, it's because he is uh, himself. And that way of being himself, and doing something different, meaning that every time he has been in a museum, he has marked a difference. Selma has been talking to me about him. I never had the chance to meet him before, and uh, for me it's really a pleasure and an honor to be able to give him uh, the word. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Manuel. Many thanks. Well, I, I am very, very happy to, to be here. It's a talk. I think that I, I should talk about uh, an experience that I, I am uh, working with my team uh, and link it about uh, Susana, talked before about uh, systems, about technology. Let me tell you that uh, I am not, uh, I work with technology, but only work. The technology is beside ours. No, I think it's not the, the rule in my, in my life. But uh, it's in Palacio de Bellas Artes, when I began, uh, like uh, Manuel said, 20, maybe, maybe in 2000, the first system, a like good system, no? the system of uh, management and information in the Viceroyalty Museum in the Bolsa Plan. This uh, system has a very simple idea. The idea was only to connect. It's, I, I think it's important, the connection, because we talk always, always to the public. How we discuss to connect to the public, how, uh, how many publics the mission should be uh, involved. I think that the first question is how we connect inside the museum. I think that if we don't connect inside, how, how we realize to connect inside? And that's, that, that was a simple idea. Well, this, this, uh, this idea is, for example, uh, of course, in, I began in this year to put an intranet. That means to, to share, because it's first of all to connect, second to share. And it's, of course, we have a system Everyone, it, what I realized in uh, my first job was in uh, uh, this museum that depends from the National Institute of Anthropology. And uh, we have two kind of workers you know, uh, in the inst cultural institutions. The workers, the, the union workers, and uh, in, in Spanish, they always we call the trabajadores de confianza. I don't know the translation. Uh, Huh? Trust position. Trust position. And I think it's very, very bad for, for the museums. And, and this system, 
was linked to, to open to, to anyone the information. That's, that's so important, any, anyone. No? And uh, of course, uh, why I, I tell you this? Because I would like only to, to show you why we worked in Palacio Bias Artes this uh, the idea of sustainability. I think the most important for me is the process of the work. The final, I know, I'm sure that we're going to find something. But the process is so important because I think it's, we see, uh, for example, and uh, uh, here, I began with this, uh, 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 this part, for example, you see, these are the goals that we have, the projects that, that we are dreaming, and these are the areas of the museum. And uh, it's, it's also simple. This, of course, the goals we put in infrastructure uh, uh, with uh, diffusion, uh, with the collection, and, and we put how we could link uh, this. Uh, any, any project has some goals. For example, I'm going to talk a little bit with the plan, museological, museological plan, that uh, this uh, uh, depends from the direction. And uh, it's like we have a dream. This dream is a goal, has a time, and has also a, 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 the, the period and, and, uh, and exactly what we want to do. When we finish, we put this in the other side of the areas. That means any issue that we are dreaming and we did, it's very important to put after to the area any area, to education, to work in, in a permanent way. I think I, I am very platonic. That means, is if I begin with a goal, this goal is finished, and it, for example, and about uh, public attention, for example, I'm thinking about uh, uh, the new uh, public that we want to, to have, to put some structure. We finish this goal, and after we do, uh, in the area of education, this, this new service. And this new service, maybe in three years, we are going to think about the game. And we put in the goal. That's, that's a circle, no? Well, this is, is this only to show you, for example, that in the, that's, uh, uh, in the internet, for example, in Plano Sologic, we are going to talk about serial museum, for example. The process of this museum. The Serial Museum, for example, we have the goals inside, and we have in the system it has a lot of issues now. We begin, I begin with communication, but uh, this is the agreements that we have, the problematics, the petitions, the uh, advice, commenters, and but the important of this is that everyone in the museum, security, mediation, diffusion, are uh, making these agreements every, every, every time. For example, in, um, in Museo Cero, Museo Museum, it's the idea that we want, uh, I put the idea to my team about, because in National Museum of Art, I began in the exhibitions to, to change the manner of working for uh, uh, the exhibition. Uh, uh, we put two museum rats working together in or three uh, at the same year in the three different exhibitions that they work together before one sort of uh, make something about uh, any kind of exhibition the other in the next exhibition could be also working with him uh, to have more uh, connection and, all, and also this connection that means sustainability and I began with this and uh, and for example, let me let me show you very very fast the indicators. In the in English, indicators. In that uh, for example, this is the indicator that we that that I have now. For example, of a personal of the opinion of the public. For example, every opinion of the public is also uh, this this system has five steps. Very very important steps. The first step I was talking. In the morning with Manuel, a very nice conversation, really, really, Manuel. And I am agreeing with Selma, you are really a person that generates many 
discussions, interesting discussions. And I was talking with Manuel this morning about uh, the, the, this, the, the first step that I put in the museum is the autonomy. Why the autonomy? Because I think it's very important about the power inside the museums. I think that the museums has really, well, this is my experience, let me tell you, the experience that I have in my years of, of working in, in museums. We, I put that autonomy in any area of the museum. But the second level is to put the responsibility. Okay, I give you autonomy, and second, you have your responsible for this autonomy. And third is the centralize, the autonomy gives you decentralization. And the fourth is, of course, the, the work, the, the uh, interdisciplinarity. I don't know how to say it, it's interdisciplinarity. And uh, uh, that is how the connections, we put the connection in, in a rhizomatic way. And, and the pipe is the coordination, is that means is my work. It's only my work to make only this in coordination. And uh, well, this is, for example, the agreements that we had in the last, uh, last year, 4,000, for example, the Golden Museum. And these agreements is, is not just the quantity, no? It's like, for example, if you're going to see the agreements about two museums, like the team had, in any area about uh, a person who worked, how many agreements, what they did, and also I know what they, uh, I know and they know. It's not only for my information, it's for them also, no? And this, well, this is super, very fast. Uh, that, as you know, that we were working before the idea of Seoul Museum is like the, the persons who work inside, they feel that they want, they want them to, to, to have this change. They want them to have this also. It was a discussion that we, we had. And, uh, well, what happened at this? We have, for example, documents that I'm going to see them in the front of, uh, on the screen, and in the documents we put, for example, all the documentation that we are working in any in any project or area. In this part, for example, I, we, are going to, we are going to see the, the archive of series, you know, of the. Uh, the I, I wanted to, to put this before, as show you the manner very very fast that we are really really working inside the museum is to use the technology. In, in this time, in communication, also in the chaos that, that we have, but the most important is to use it. There is in the field of exactly communication because I was talking many many years about uh, how important in, in in the museums we have we have areas of devotion of mediation of uh, the exhibition, and I think that in the Mexican museums we have. Um, I don't want to say a problem, but uh, we have a, a, an instructor that is more important, for example, exhibition area than diffusion area. I think it's very bad, very, very bad. Because any area of the museum is so important, so strong, it's the same for me, the same. And I put every time in my team how, how important it is. is, for example, if you see, and I, I tell you very, very fast, for example, the, the National Institute of, of uh, Anthropology and History, his mission is to conserve, protect the, uh, the heritage, archaeological heritage, uh, historical heritage, paleontological heritage of the, of the country. It is to, to conserve, to research, and to, and to the diffusion. But in my institution, the, this institution, the diffusion is adjective, it's not substantive. And I think the museum is the same. Is how to put uh, all the areas of the museum in the same in the same field. That's so important. That's so important. And for example, in, in Syria uh, museum, we I, I think it's a flag. It's a flag of the museum because, as you know, the sustainability for the museums is if we protect, conserve the, the most important with the heritage, natural and cultural and the planet Earth is the most important issue. I think the museums should really should work to, to, to this is in our DNA, how to say, in our, it is in, inside ours to, to have this flag uh, uh, and to work. Uh, like I, United Nations has uh, 
uh, many in the last century, in the 80s, began to put this in the name Sustainative Italy. But also in the ICOM, for example, uh, I, I remember about, for example, the, the Rome Tower in, in, uh, in Chile, uh, that we were talking about society and museums, and also in, uh, in Guadalajara, that uh, in the 80s, that we were talking about the exhibition and the connection, with, the connection with the society and projects together. And I think it, we, are, we are discussing a lot about this term, and also in many, many, uh, uh, in many, many uh, fields uh, in the ICOM and also the Alliance of Museums and, uh, uh, of, uh, uh, for example, with my team, we realize what happened in the world about sustainability. No? This, this is our effort. I, I know there are more of this. Uh, uh, for example, we, we studied the Canadian Conservative Institute. We studied the Association of Science and Technology Centers. We studied the California Association of Museums, what we uh, did about this. And the Chicago Green Museums, for example, the city of Chicago, they give to the museums the, the, uh, the excellence in sustainability to, to the museums. No? The city is working with the museums, for example. And the Green Committee for the American Alliance of Museums, this is also important. No? This is American, this is their making this uh, 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 effort uh, to, uh, and, and, uh, and also a, a very strong policy no? about the Green Museums. And well, in Australia, for example, like I, got, I read very, very well the, also the, the abstract about the Minister of Culture of the, of the Green Museum, so important is the connection with the society. They, they have also the, the argument that the, the Green Museums is, uh, the, the museum has the change of, uh, and the connection to the society, to the, to the sustainability. This is really very, very strong for the Australian museums. And uh, well, the ICOM, for example, this year, the ICOM is going to put the sustainability in May, for example, no? with all the museums, like, uh, 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 like a discussion for all the museums in, this, uh, in, 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 in May. And well, as Manuel said, I have been working since five years ago with this group, this very important group uh, that has uh, uh, this uh, uh, kind of museums like Tate, like uh, Metropolitan, but the, the director of the Tate, Nicholas uh, uh, began to discuss with all of the directors about the Green Museum. It was so important, so important because it's also how the, the technology in the museums no, and it is in, in some kind is not so good, no? and, uh, and how the, the climate is we have to really to change rules, no? Because many, many museums of the world they don't have a weather, a, a, how to say, control the control the climate, a, a, a climate control. They don't have it. And we were discussing, and I think it's so important the discussion and uh, in 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 the South and also in in United Kingdom. We are uh, the uh, association in United Kingdom association has a really a very good uh, uh, museums working. Uh, towards sustainability, uh, a very uh, good project to, that we were using to in, in our application. Well, what, what is, uh, what, what we change inside the museum? We change, for example, we want this, the measure, we make a, made a diagnosis, uh, we focalize on something I'm going to tell you, and we, what were our goals. That was, uh, we, we made this, we, made, we measured this, the carbon, the water consumption, the, the production of oxygen waste, and uh, this made in June and July of last, of last year. And uh, what were, uh, uh, we worked with uh, uh, 10 sections uh, and, and, uh, uh, about sustainability, uh, and what is this, these sections, what were connected with, with us, for example. And uh, the possible solutions in waste, in, in washroom, external areas, and lighting. But this process, we were talking, we were working with all the team inside. And, uh, and the uh, solution that we, that, uh, we realized 
uh, 34, 32 solutions that we thought that we could do, and at the end we made 18, 18 solutions. And uh, what uh, we, of course, uh, made seven dynamic workshops, and what's, what's so important, you know, and of course it's not only the communication by intranet, it's also the, this relation that we have uh, in, in these workshops, and, and in these workshops we realize that the goal is about exhibitions, for example. No? The, the, the exhibitions was almost a half percent that we want, they wanted to work, to work in, in, in the museum. And we began to work with management, exhibits design, administration, and marketing. And this is the targets that we have in, in, uh, in the exhibition. And we put this target on the offset of uh, 100 tons of, of car carbon footprints, the training of, uh, uh, the, of the community, uh, and how to promote transport, use energy efficiency measures. And for example, I put the goals in September after this, in September uh, 5, with all my team. And how we made the implementation? Well, we propose, can I say we propose? It's we propose, not me, I. We propose really to develop this. And this is the 18 uh, uh, issues that we uh, wanted really to, to do to change and in the Silo Museum. And uh, and what's really what was really very 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 interesting because uh, in 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 these four months, five months working with the team, I realized really how they began to connect, how they began to connect because it's not the only the goal was not only to to do this for example because we did this with Octavio Paz exhibition. The goal of course was was one exhibition, but the most important goal for me is not was not Octavio Pass. The most important goal was exhibitions, it's platonic, you know? It's okay, we made this, and I would like, I would love that my team, by their state, their, themselves, continues. That was my goal. I never uh, speak with them this. <laughs> but you know, that is, uh, but this was so important because uh, we began, for example, to put, uh, for example, this uh, statement, Octavio Pass, we put, in the first, in, in the beginning of the exhibition, no? because what Octavio Paz, and we put how, uh, uh, what Octavio Paz think about uh, sustainability, and what's a very uh, ecological consensus. That's very interesting uh, uh, argument of Octavio Paz. And, uh, well, was, uh, what was indicated more about, for example, invitations that would change uh, the, uh, the paper and, and also uh, the elements of exhibitions, how, uh, how we work with this sustainability, and also, for example, every, every uh, before an exhibition, we threw away all the an exhibition, the, uh, the materials. And for example, at, at this moment, we, we did, we gave to to the children of Atotoni Kutula, you know? and what's incredible you know, the letter that, that, the, that the director gave to me. You know? He told me what's, what's so important that you gave me this, but before the museums were throw away, you know, for example, this kind of materials. And uh, we uh, began to spread the ideas in one blog that the name is Tuola, and also we made uh, to reduce these CO2 emissions to, uh, to put a page where for only, only for uh, the, uh, the museum, the museum. You could see, for example, in our page like this. And, uh, and also, we put this kind of information, uh, is that, that was the work of my, of my team. This, uh, we have uh, uh, this uh, staff, 20 every day, but we, have, we put 16 uh, uh, young people with us, you know, the volunteers in this project. And uh, well, the result is okay. In some uh, departments, like editorial, uh, there's not bands that we're working about. And uh, but uh, is uh, and what was uh, uh, we offset our carbon footprint? How, for example, we have a certificate 
uh, of uh, Tatura de Targono. And let me tell you that was also for the community, a community of indigenous campesinos de Oaxaca. <laughs> this is, uh, we are uh, working with uh, uh, Pronatura, and Pronatura gave us this certificate that we really work in sustainability. No? It's, uh, 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 well, but we continue, that's, that's the key. No? Now, for example, we're an exhibition of Henry Cartier with song, now in the museum, and for example, it's the same. Now, my team, began to realize, for example, all the exhibition of Cartier Bresson, for example, all the, the wood that we produced was before in the other exhibition of the Castle Duncan that we made in May last year. And uh, that's, well, this is a small, very small experience, but I would, we would like to, to express only that uh, uh, how uh, this very, very important issue for the museum, like I said before, is so important to connect, first of all, inside, and after, go outside uh, to, uh, to, uh, to the public, and, and, and also, let me tell you that we connect a lot in connection with the public, because all the volunteers were every day talking uh, with the persons that were really uh, talking about, or, or they, they, they were uh, thinking, how we could make this. Because also, let me tell you, the Palacio de Villas Artes is so, so big, so big, it's also the, the head of the, the uh, uh, music, the culture in Mexico. Uh, we, we, I began to speak with other teams inside, I they would say, okay, Miguel, we go with you. And that's very important. It's very important that this small step, I think, I think, is in this kind of work that we made could, uh, uh, for me, it was an opportunity really to put the, this, the manner of, that we work, the manner that we work this autonomy is, is, uh, what is so, so important that now is like, uh, I, I show you of Cartier Bresson, we uh, continue the idea of, of the civil museum and the importance uh, about the museums to, uh, to realize this opportunity that we, really to, uh, we have about thinking the sustainability is an uh, issue that we really should care about, uh, about museums in the future. Uh, I, I think the museums in the future really could have this uh, kind of issue because it's, uh, it's not only is the community, for example, that for Finnish is, uh, is not also, also, as you know, working in an uh, ecological issue. It's only also economical and social issue. No? It's, it's a three steps really inside sustainability. And I think that we began to work in these three steps. Well, thank you. And <laughs> I have to say that I am surprised, the perfect timing, exactly 25 minutes, <laughs> which I was never expecting. Uh, it's very curious, and we'll talk about it later. In two days, I have been hearing about sustainability in a real world, not as in the architectural world, where it's, it's a mantra to allow you to do whatever and say this is sustainable. But uh, uh, the Miguel uh, Fernandez Felix lecture and yesterday our visit to the producer of these beautiful glasses proving that uh, you can do sustainable items, at least in Mexico. Lydia Mendersky is another of our lecturers in, of course, like every one of us, a very weird one, uh, meaning she's a journalist uh, coming from the uh, Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile, a Fulbright fellow at the University of Maryland, and uh, uh, she finally saw herself being the cultural attaché of Chile to the United States and being appointed the director of the Museo de las Americas, the OAS Museum. We were talking a lot yesterday about her experience there, and she's going to share it with us. And uh, thank you very much, thank you. Lydia. Um, Thank you, Manuel. Jose, Jose, don't go. 
don't go, I'm a little bit technologically challenged, so. Um, okay, so Faya said I should start with this, with this nice weather. This is the Museum of the Americas. It is the back facade. Um, and I'm going to talk about my, my experience in heading the Art Museum of, of the Americas. When Selm, ah, how do I advance? Okay, when, when Selma invited me a few, uh, a few months back to talk about a sad story, it was a happy and also a sad story because uh, we did uh, many things, but um, in the end, this hidden jewel, which is the, let me start by, let me start by showing you where it is. The, um, So the Art Museum of the Americas, if you see here, where's the capital? It, uh, Third Street. So the capital here. Here you have the, the United States Capitol. You have Constitution Avenue, the National Mall, the White House there, and you have nothing, nothing in between that has any integration with uh, the Americas or Latin America. And here you have the Organization of American States, and in the back, I'm a little bit short, you have the actual museum. Uh, now the story of the museum, or let me start by, by telling you very briefly what, what, uh, what the story of the OAS is. Um, this is the Pan American Union building. Um, this is the back, I'm, I'm showing you the site. The, where the museum is, this is the back of the museum. It used to be the house or the residence of the Secretary General of the OAS. And uh, this is the front facade. There. This is the front facade of the, of the house. It's a house that has a, it's a little bit uh, larger than my own apartment. It's a bachelor apartment. It's 238 square meters. Um, and it has five rooms between what used to be the dining room, the, the, the living room, the bedrooms, etc. And um, this is the entrance. Now we, we did manage to put a glass door because that, that door used to be closed and uh, it wasn't too inviting. So we put a glass door. Um, and so we did traveling exhibitions. And how the museum came about is, is, uh, is, is the story that I'm going to tell you now a little bit. Uh, this is when the OAS building was first designed, uh, first opened in 1910. It was a, it was a, it's a building that was designed by Paul Philippe Cré, um, uh, who became, uh, who became a very prominent architect, he was French, and it was inaugurated in, in uh, 1910 by President Truman. That's the inauguration of the building. And it was created uh, in 1890. It's, it's very interesting to see that it was the first international American conference. Look at the, at the dates, from October 2 of 1889, to April 19th, that's how, how long the conference was, um, of, 18, of the following year. And the main, and the main uh, objective of this conference that was then called, it established itself as the, UNO, the, the, the International Union of American Republics. It then became the Pan American Union. And uh, finally, in, 19, uh, in, in the mid uh, 20th century, it became the Organization of American States. But it started out as being an organization that uh, was meant to resolve commercial issues and disputes within the countries of the region. Um, and and, and that, then it became, throughout, uh, throughout the years, uh, and, and, and different um, incarnations, it was about maintaining peace, 
promoting security, peace, human rights, development, justice, and security. The OAS today has 80-something mandates. Um, and the museum started, uh, started in, 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 as, as the visual arts program in the late, uh, in the late 40s. And, uh, and, and it started, it, it, it worked, it used to function in that build, big building that, that you saw, um, which is prime location in, in, in Washington. And then it started in, in the late, uh, in the late 40s, in 1949. This was the first donation of the collection. It was a beautiful painting uh, by Candido Portinari, one of Brazil's uh, most prominent, um, most prominent artists at the time, and uh, and then the, the, the OAS um, established a small acquisition fund, and it started collecting um, art from donations, and also it, it started acquiring because the visual arts program had a very active uh, exhibition program. Every month there was a new artist, uh, upcoming and emer or emerging artist that, that showed in the OAS. This was between the, the late the, or early 50s and the late uh, 80s under the helm of Jose Gomez Sicre. Um, and, and so, so the, the artist exhibited there, like Fernando Otero, for example, had his first show outside Colombia in the OAS. In, in 1957, he was virtually unknown, and uh, and that's why we could, we we don't there isn't a Botero um, painting or work in the collection because he sold out the on opening night at two hundred dollars a piece, and uh, <laughs> and so so the collection started growing haphazardly between donations, um, you know every artist that showed. Uh, was they, they acquired a painting or a work. And today the collection is a little over 2,000 pieces. Um, the permanent council in, 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 with the occasion of, of the bicentennial of the US in 1976 um, created the Art Museum of the Americas. And if you see, I don't have the picture here, if you see the um, the resolution, it, it's a line and a half that says the Permanent Council establishes the Art Museum of the Americas, which is to function in that building that, that I showed you first, the resident. No funding, no vision, no, it was to promote the art in the Americas, but, but that was it. And the museum, you know, it's gone through through several incarnations of, of, uh, of, um, of success, of surviving, the, it, it has gone through budget cuts. And the main problem is that the, that the museum is, is, belongs to 34 owners, which, is, which are the 34 countries of the Americas, Canada, the United States, Mexico, Central America, the Caribbean. And, and, um, and then all the countries of uh, South America and Brazil. And the, and, and, the, and the OAS is a political organization. It is the oldest forum, political forum in the world. It's older than, than the United Nations. And, uh, and the agenda is political. So the museum is something that kind of uh, grew and had a life of its own. It's been losing resources and attention. Um, the, the increasingly, and 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 the country. So, <laughs> Faya saw these pictures earlier, and he said, "Yeah, what kind of resolutions can can one achieve when?" Oh, the other important thing is that the OAS, the agreements are not voted uh, are by consensus. That means that there's no there's it's not by votes. So they have to reach a consensus in order to make a decision. So now I'm going to switch over to um, 
when, when I started uh, at the OAS, I, they invited me to join the OAS as, as, uh, after I was cultural attaché of, of Chile um, as a director of cultural programs, which I was very kind of comfortable with because I, I'm, I was very good at organizing cultural things, you know, but in the film festivals, establishing alliances with, with other partners, with the Kennedy Center, even with the National Gallery, we, we, did a, we did lots of programming. But then, because of the structure of the OAS, they, they uh, said, you have to become the director of the museum. It didn't have a director then. And I said, no, I'm not a museum professional. I, I don't come from the world of academia, no way. So anyway, I was... I wasn't too comfortable, but we did what we could. And we had this big dream. It was, uh, uh, we try, tried to establish alliances to save the museum. Today the museum has a collection of 2,000 pieces, as I said, uh, zero budget for conservation, uh, climate control is so-so, um, and, and, and so we tried hard to, to um, find alliances with universities, different attempts. And I wasn't the first one under other secretaries general, like Cesar Gaviria, uh, even Orfila. There were attempts with different partners, universities, or different museums to, to merge, to establish a, a, a strategic alliance to build a new museum that, 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 could, that could respond to the times. And, uh, and I think under my, under my uh, tenure, we did several attempts. And uh, here is where I switched to. to <laughs> OK, this is. So we did lots of, no, this is not it. Yeah. Pero como se ve entero? So while we, while we uh, try to, 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 to establish alliances, we, um, Susana was talking about diffusion, um, uh, Miguel also talked about that. When I first arrived at the museum, there were, um, I asked, show me the last, uh, the last uh, media coverage of, and, and it was, they, they, they handed me a, a piece of paper with a photocopy of a, a little reseña. So we started, uh, we started giving a lot of attention to, to, uh, to, to media and to uh, promoting it in the media so, because we didn't want to uh, be uh, the, the, the hidden jewel of Washington DC is what, what they called the, the museum. And so we started, uh, organizing traveling exhibitions that had a lot of media coverage, uh, which was good, but it didn't bring any more, any more um, resources or, or vision or leadership in the, the, ah, this is, let me stop here. This is especially Graciela. This is a, an, an exhibition we did with Alejandra de la Paz, um, my colleague at the Mexican Cultural Institute. Um, it was one of the alliances that, that we did, and it got, you know, it, it was called Mundos Posibles, Possible World, Worlds. It was with eight um, Mexican photographers, and it was highlighted at the end of the year by the Washington Post of, as one of the best exhibitions. It cost like $8,000 to print that. So it was, it, it, it was a, so here's the, the, the coverage. We try to promote um, contemporary art, try to link the exhibitions to the mandates of the OAS, um, the quality, all these, all these uh, nice names, democracy, human rights, I mean, not nice names, they're, 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 they're important concepts, but sometimes in an organization as, as complicated as that one, it, they, they, they get kind of uh, a little bit, blurred and um, and so so we wanted to make the museum sustainable because oh Jose I'm gonna need you again and el de el, no el otro el otro 
no, the wind, S, S. So this is a book, we, we, we got resources and we wanted to, to, uh, to do a whole um, renovation of the OAS campus, having that prime location in Washington DC and, uh, and the OAS not having any resources. We, um, we got in touch with H2L2, who were the, uh, it was the, the office, the architecture office in, uh, or firm in Philadelphia that was the successor of Paul Cray, the original architect of the, of the building. So we did. Okay. I'm sorry about my inability to. So anyway, this is okay. So so we hired that that firm to uh, to look at the big picture and do um, a plaza of the Americas and a big complex of the um, of, of the region of the Americas that that covered that covered not only the museum but. Um, but the whole OAS complex, you see the location there is the Washington Monument in the back. Uh, the, the, you see the transparency. This is what our dream was. This was the book that we came up with after months of, of, of uh, working, uh, thinking of, of the museum being integrated to, to the rest of the Organization of American States, but also as a, as a plaza of the Americas. And so we, uh, so we took this book and this presentation or this proposal to several, to several possible funders, some in Mexico, some in, um, some in Central America, foundations, universities, with in, in, in different, in different uh, versions. And so this was sort of our dream in, in, uh, in what we tried to do. Um, in what we tried to do, but not in a sustainable way. Um, this is, by the way, this picture is from Art After Dark, which was one of the fundraising efforts that, that we did. We organized a big party in September, and uh, we had like 800 people to 1,000. It's being done every year, and uh, we make some money out of that, but, we, but, but it's done in the gardens of the OES, which is, which is uh, it's, it's a beautiful site. And um, so, so this is what we, um, what our dream was, um, to make the museum uh, a museum that was alive, um, a museum that fostered dialogue between the nations, that, uh, promoting, that, that promoted new ideas, creativity, dialogue, um, that, that, that unified the continent, um, and, and, and so this is Roberto Mata. Um, this goes back to our history a little bit that I told you about. Um, and um, so, so, so we had this and we finished with, uh, we, we have and we still do, I say we because now the director of the museum was my, my second on board, Andres Navia, and he has continued to, to keep the museum alive, but always struggling. The operational budget today is $15,000 for the year. That, that is besides uh, the, the salaries take up more or less. The OAS gives $600,000 yearly, and that includes the salaries of a, a staff of, of five, six people, the guards, security, faxes, um, the internet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we do these uh, outreach programs, educations. With we've worked with the State Department, with with outside uh, partners, um, museums in Central America. This one, uh, this one was was uh, um, an initiative we did with. Uh, with uh, the Marte, the Museum of Art of uh, Honduras, and through a program of the American Alliance of Museums, so we tried to keep it alive. But we, but we dreamed of having of having um, 
like a real museum with real, with real curatorial vision and leadership and uh, and and sustainable and sustainability through time. So. Um, so this is what I've already been talking about, our vision that I talked about. It, it, we have a heritage uh, that, that, that is quite unique in the nation's capital. Um, and so this is what we dreamed of, the, the new Plaza of the Americas with a new crystal or glass transparent wing that united the, that, uh, the, the, the actual museum with the, with the places. This could be... Uh, the, uh, 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 a place where, where you could show art in, with, with new technology inside a plaza. And this, these are arch architectural uh, projects, part of the project that, that had, uh, that explained this. This was gonna be a whole OES master plan, having offices built in, in, in that. There was, this was a, really complete master plan. I'm, I'm showing you very, very like, like highlights, little bits and pieces. And, um, and this is how it ended. Let's make it happen together. And I'll tell you a little story. Now I have to go back to, the, to this. So I'm going to tell you a story that uh, it's short, but it it um, it, it more uh, more or less uh, encapsulates or illustrates the problem of how uh, or, or why it's been so difficult to establish to to have the museum, um, you know, marry a university or 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 a foundation or an academic institution, which is. The way the way things seem to be headed today, and I'll show you. Uh, this is a sad story. When I came to the OAS, this this is this is a sculpture by Edgar Negret, uh, Maestro Edgar Negret, who's um, one of the most important uh, Colombian uh, sculptors. And it was donated uh, some 20 years ago to the OAS. Um, but beyond the unveiling ceremony, there was no provision for conservation, for, for upkeep, for nothing. So uh, when, when I went to the museum, this is the way it looked like. Total state of decay. It was placed in a, in a, in a very bad spot because it was, look, look, look where it was. Right, no breathing space. It was, so it became a liability. During my six years there, we tried several, several attempts to, to, have it, uh, to have it restored um, with, no, with, with no success. And today, it's gone. I talked with, uh, with a new director. Everybody, that we tried with the Colombian government, with foundations, some in Mexico, and uh, to no avail. It became a liability because the base was was rusting. It was it was starting to get inclined. So uh, in at any moment it it was gonna fall over, and it was terrible to see um, such a symbolic piece of of, of art, el maíz, the corn cob, which is which has been historically the sustainability and the symbol of of uh, the of of the Americas of the nourishing of, of, of the countries of the region um, in a total state in, in a total state of decay and it became an eyesore um, sadly and today it's gone so they had to remove it uh, because it, it was uh, it was a hazard and uh, of course the ambassadors many of the ambassadors yelled and uh, but nobody did anything and and today it's gone Part of the reason why why the why the problem exists, and I think, in, in my view, is that first there are 34 owners, and the museum be belongs to a political organization. Its core mission is not is not to have a museum, and um, and each of the 34 countries has their own agenda. So the museum is is something that is tangential. It's not the core mission of, of the OAS. So 
So uh, this is a future. Is it, it, I don't know what the what the what comes next. Um, I hope there is enough leadership. Today there was a new Secretary General of the OAS elected, so I don't know where the museum is going to go. And um, so I hope we can come up with some ways in which we can we can uh, discuss possible recalculations and. Uh, and hopefully these, some of these dreams, and I'm not the first one to dream, there were dreamers before me, um, come to a happy ending. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lydia. It was a very nice, tall history, and a little bit sad, so. I think we are a little bit crying but about that, but, but that gives me the opportunity to introduce, and what's going to happen now? Because this uh, meeting, este encuentro, is about uh, remapping, recalculating, and realigning. Where are we going, is my question. And uh, uh, yesterday night, I tried to talk, or I was talking with one of our, uh, how did you call it, collaborator guests in this program? Uh, the people who are not talking, but we are, uh, 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 mm? Observ one of our observers, about where museums were going to. Uh, if we were able to calculate, because she was saying what the museum is going to be in 20 years, and I said 20 years is not the issue, it's 50 because in 20 years, things will be more or less. 100 years ago, it was the starting of World War uh, I. So uh, the change 20 years later in is the start of a Spanish Civil War are more or less the same things. But what happened in the post-war of World War II and what happened in the 60s and the change in the 60s, meaning 50 years later, was a lot different. The presidency of Kennedy marked a complete different world that uh, it was in the, in 14. I, ha I will have a, a journey about uh, fashion and World War first next week in Madrid with the Costume Museum, and we are discussing how the world changed, in closing also in fashion in this moment in the in the world. So how? Think, and I will put the question: What do you think? that museums are going to be in 40, 50 years. Where are we going? Because if we are going to remap and recalculate, or we remap and recalculate thinking on how the museum is really going to be, or we just are uh, putting, I don't know how to say English, parches. Hmm? Uh, parches, parches. So, uh, and I think we have to think in a big way. So, how do you think museums are going to be after the middle of the 21st century? May I ask uh, Miguel first, boys first, instead? <laughs> no, 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 I, I, won't, I won't start asking Okay, I like, I like this. Uh, can, can you say it to the microphone? And, uh, Yo digo y tú traduces. Yes. Lo que tenemos que pensar es no a dónde vamos nosotros. What we have que, to think is not where we are going ourselves. Sino qué tipo de públicos vamos a tener. But what's the public that we are going to have? ¿Qué vamos a querer? ¿Qué van a querer? What they are going to want. ¿Cómo podemos seguir siendo relevantes? Uh, how? ¿Cómo podemos seguir siendo relevantes? How can we keep, can keep on being relevant en la edad de la tecnología in the age of technology sí. so yo más bien pensaría eso no nosotros ellos que van yes, a querer yes, I agree. You, you are pinpointing exactly what i wanted including doing what i asked you to do first is being you a part of the panel and, and I, I, 
<laughs> because I was complaining first <laughs> with Graciela, saying that uh, I was missing two persons in this panel, that was Selma and Graciela. And Selma said, Graciela said, no, go to Selma. <laughs> but finally, she took the hook. So, uh, well, excuse me a second. Uh, excuse, may someone help? Puedes darle. Eh, excuse me, Monen, Monen, because in order. Gracias. Yo sí quisiera insistir en que respondan a las dos, por las dos dimensiones del, del asunto. No diría un problema. Es un she reto. wants to insist that everybody answer to both questions. Sí, porque to the, to el, el espacio es el que contiene. The space o es el, the one o es el que o es el que delimita o no limita. O es the one Entonces, limiting. el mundo va a ser diferente. Mañana. Así que a mí sí me gustaría saber cuál es el concepto que tienen ustedes de ese espacio donde se va a vivir una experiencia Which que solamente you have... el museo te podría dar, porque yo ya estaría cuestionando si los museos wait, tendrían wait, un futuro uh, which is, o no. ¿Cuál es el concepto que el museo puede dar de esta experiencia que solo el museo puede hacer? Porque ella está si los museos son los que están dando esto o no, o es algo diferente. Ok. Uh, So, Miguel, do you dare to start? Well, you know, these, these kind of questions, uh, I, I don't know the answer first. That's, I don't know. But, is, uh, but you put me in th thinking about words. I think, for example, about uh, a connection, about uh, uh, horizontality in museums, I, I think uh, uh, about uh, uh, rhizomatic uh, uh, inside and outside. Of course, like Graciela said, what, what the public thinks, but what we are thinking also inside. I think also the change in the museums is also inside the museums. It's not only to, to think about what is ha happening uh, uh, with the public, it's what is happening in ourselves. What, Is, I am thinking in the beginning of this. No, I, I think it's so uh, so huge the, the question that uh, is uh, to put this this uh, first of all words. I think one of the things that we have to really think about after all these really incredible talks is the fact that museums are going to change really probably pretty radically. And I think we're going to see some failures. I think we're going to see museums that cannot sustain themselves, as we saw with the Pacific Asia Museum and USC, our university, having to take it over. Um, there are many examples of these that have happened in the last 10, 15 years, starting with maybe the Ringling Museum, which is now a university museum, and a number of other museums. Why are they going to fail? They're going to fail either for economic reasons or because, as Graciela says, they're not relevant. Nobody wants to come. They don't talk to anyone. They're, they're, there's no communication inside, let alone outside. I think we're going to see mergers, and we're going to see, um, I mean, just like I know your successor has talked to me, well, if we could only connect to a university museum, if we could only be a part of a, I mean, where, does, where will the relevance come? Will it be with students? Will it be with different kinds of publics? And I think we just have to be very, we have to be very, um, Look, with what happened in, in Tunisia today, you know, with, with that massacre in, in, in the museum, museums mean something. What happened in Mosul, you know, the, the, these collections mean something. Either they continue to mean something, they stop meaning something, or their meanings are perverted or changed. But I think we really have to be very, very kind of down and dirty about this and really face that um, if a museum like the Corcoran could fail completely in Washington, D.C., the OAS Museum has the possibility of failing. And then the rescuing, you know, who rescues what? So I just think it's a very big, big question. No, no. Keep, keep, oh, okay. oh, sorry. But, uh, yes, I, I, I understand what you are saying. Of course, museums are going to fail and possible the model is going to change. Uh, what Miguel is saying is clear. It's not only what are the, going to be the public demands, but also uh, the building of the uh, museums, may we say conscience, inner conscience, 
inner core and thinking on themselves and reflecting. But, uh, and I have another question there that I will give the word in a moment, but I will keep on asking, but the museum model is going to still be working uh, in a few decades, or the museo model is uh, changing in such a way, even with technology, even with connectivity, even with the presence of the web and of the knowledge and of the sharing of the information, because we are now, we are talking about digital. Digital, sorry, is, I, going, I was going to say it's bullshit, if you allow me. Uh, I, I had to, to give the lecture uh, in the 30 years anniversary of ICANN, the International Confederation of Architectural Museums, and they asked me to explain to them what's going to be collected in the 21st century. And I, I was going to explain that to MoMA, I was going to explain that to Cité de l'Architecture, so of course, I, I talk about digital and, and my talk was about the volatility. And the, and, and the volatility that means that if we are collecting digital, we don't have the time of reflection to choose what we are going to collect because it's going to disappear when we decide that it's, it's collectible. And, uh, and I, my thought call was vanishing, vanishing paper, vanishing record. That means that everything can, can disappear. But uh, museums are going to be digital. Uh, you are talking from a very traditional point of view, and I, I enjoy it. You are talking with all the posts and saying uh, what were the requirements that I think they were almost impossible to, to fill all the requirements that were there. Do you think that museums in the digital world is going to change our approach? So I, I want to talk about this notion of distribution. The distributed museum is a concept that I've written about, and it's something that I've taken from the distributed learning field, which is how learning is changing in the digital age. Learning is not just happening at schools, it's happening across many platforms, many spaces, and I think that this is the future that we will see with museums, more of a distributed nature of museums. And it's happening, even though I say I'm not a technological determinist, I think one thing that technology has done is broaden the audience of the museum. So you don't have only a local physical audience, you have a global online audience. Every museum that has a website or a web presence has local and global. And so we have to be very aware that we're not just a physical space. You know, this is something that, that we talked about in the very, very beginning of this conference, you know, that it's about going out into the community it's more than just a physical space. And I think we will see more distribution, more of the distributed museum. And what does that mean? That means everything from, from mobile trucks going out into communities, it means more programs going out, not just the desire to bring people to the museum, but going out, going out physically, going out virtually, online exhibitions, interactive experiences. And I think this distributed nature, we have to get away from holding on to the building, and maybe, maybe this is one of the problems of OAS, the, the museum, is that it was holding on to this physicality where the organization itself was so distributed in nature, it wasn't reflected in the physical space. First of all, I'd like to thank all of you for a truly stimulating afternoon. And this is for someone who attends a lot of discussions about museums. And um, the, I just wanted to say one thing. Because I live in Washington, and I kept banging on at Lydia about this, is when um, Maïs um, was outside, it was one, if not the only piece of contemporary sculpture on view between the United States Capitol and the State Department. <laughs> so and that this was uh, um, at the National Gallery. We put a piece outside. We have a sculpture garden. But there's a fence around it. There's grass on it. A piece that was actually existing in space. So that meant that if somebody, a congressman or a visitor, went from the Capitol, say giving a speech at the Capitol, 
and went to the State Department, there was or would have been one piece of contemporary sculpture. And that was, this was a very important piece. So I'll say that um, it was Heartbreak Hotel for all of us when it had to come down. The second thing is um, we had an exhibition at the National Gallery, which was a collaboration with Mexico on Olmec. And one of the most important talks given there was by somebody who looks at the iconography of the corn, we call it corn king, that is the iconography of the maiz figure. And the point that he made is there was no better time to give this um, talk and have this exhibition for unindigenous culture or the octonous culture, the much contested issue of Olmec, but that in fact the thing that linked um, from Mexico to uh, the south of America was corn. And here was maize. So at the end of his talk, at the end of his exhibition in 2003 was to say, and the triumph of the Olmec is here at the OAS. So that a, when you talk about the distributed museum, the inside of a museum, one work of art, the most visited work of art on Pennsylvania or in the area that I just discussed, this was it. And uh, so it's uh, more than a, a small cry. That was one thing. But I also would like to say on the point of the distributed museum, and I hope everybody reads um, Susanna's book and that it gets all the reviews it should have. But one of the problems for museums, traditional museums, this, the museums here, the problem is storage. And data storage is the, uh, if we, the more we talk about it, the more we have to think whether you are storing butterflies or you are storing data. It, with a distributed museum, choices have to be made and we're not there. The other thing is right now, how expensive is it to have a mobile device or computer or to be linked up with oil prices going down? That could be different. But that is also something that we have to see is when we look then to the past for an example, the revolution of the printed page um, and what that made for distribution is right in line what um, Susanna is saying. So as we have seen, every one of the talks here, the bringing the outside in or the inside out in all of the ways um, that are represented, um, this is uh, just a marvelous occasion to have this discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Fejia. Uh, we have, we have first, first, Chava, wait a second because we have another one uh, to the right. And yes, at the beginning, he was asking. Uh, thank you for the lectures, first of all. Very inspired. I also agree with it. And um, definitely a really hard question. I totally agree with Selma. Uh, what museums models are confronting these days is basically very uh, pessimistic in this way. I love I loved the data you just gave it to you to us, especially about how many young people between 16 to 19 people to nine years old they're not in school right now. That's really frightening. And uh, I really believe that the next model in museums history is going to be a mix of all the things you're you're teaching us to to us today, and it's going to base in a small world world called community. I think we need to increase more participation with community and the challenge how we can take the museums outside to urban spaces, for example, as markets or urban spaces where common people is not really allowed to get into one physical space. I love the idea of digital museum, but I also think it's really challenging, especially in communities like Oaxaca, where technology is not really in the first hand already. So it's going to be quite interesting. We're in the middle of a global crisis that, in my opinion, is just starting. So it's going to be quite interesting. And uh, just communication between all these cultural spaces and really strong effort to build a really strong community, I think it's going to be part of the main challenge for the next 20 years at least. Thank you, because the, the thing that surprised me more in Oaxaca these two days, hearing and, and seeing, we have been in El Casa, uh, we have heard today what you were saying, is that link uh, with the community, and that's giving back, and giving back from the art world, uh, and I think that's a Mexican thing. Uh, I know that uh, American museums are doing that too, 
but uh, the, the clear links with community uh, for me it makes completely the difference. When we, when we were still talking in our technical break, uh, Chava started to put me questions. He belongs to a Studio Shakishe. And, uh, and I would like him to put to the public and to this panel the question he was putting to me. Hi, hello. My name is Salvador, and I do work in Studio Shakishe. And uh, I found it so interesting that uh, a lot of the discussion was around accessibility to the museum, right? To have publics have a, a grasp of this knowledge and democracy, dem getting it in a democratic way. But uh, my question there will be, how could the public affect the museum? Because democratized knowledge becomes really relevant when it's used to construct something, to alter something. So, and I think, I, I mean, I'm not trying to get out the attention out of uh, accessibility. I think it's a highly relevant theme, but I think there's a really good work of, of uh, possibilities that are already built. And I think this other area of the public being a active, affecting entity, it's kind of something that haven't, I haven't seen so much discussion around. So I don't know if you have anything to say around that. I would like uh, you answer in that, Pilar. Voy a responder en español si me haces favor de traducir. <laughs> She's going to uh, answer in Spanish if we translate for her. Creo que los planteamientos que ha hecho Manuel, Graciela, eh, allá atrás, no, no, la, nuestra compañera, y lo que usted se ha estado comentando. I believe that the uh, things that has been posed by Manuel, Graciela, Mercedes, Everybody. Creo que todo se conecta y, y al, um, yo tengo una visión un poco exógena de los museos y me parece que viven en, en una especie de isla. Cuando hablan, ahorita Manuel dice los museos, a mí me gustaría contextualizar mi respuesta, los museos en México. Eh, she has a visión exógena, eh, exo, exterior from the museums, from the outside. So, uh, and she would like to contextualize every time I say me, the museum she would like to ask, What are we talking about the museums in Mexico? En México tenemos más de mil museos en todo el país. En la zona metropolitana tenemos cien, casi 200. In Mexico we have more than 1000 museums in the country, in the metropolitan area uh, 100 to 200. Y en 40 años o se renuevan o se mueren, porque ahorita mismo va muy poca gente al, a los museos, ni siquiera la mitad de la población. In 40 years or they renew it or they will die because the uh, public is not going now. Pub Tienen su público y hacen cosas muy interesantes, pero trabajan eh, de una manera muy endógena, se ven a sí mismos. Y a mí me parece que lo que dice Graciela es fundamental. Tenemos que partir de lo que la gente necesita. They have their public, uh, <laughs> but uh, they, are wa they are watching themselves. And uh, they are not watching what the public wants. They are looking at themselves only. And what Graciela is saying is very interesting because we have to know what the public wants. Porque finalmente habría que ver la misión de cada museo, pero en el caso de los museos universitarios se trabaja para lo para la gente, no se trabaja para las exposiciones. Because we have to uh, now uh, with the mission of every museum, but with the university museums, we are not working for exhibits. We are going, working for the people. Y esa gente qué elementos tiene conceptuales y qué herramientas emocionales para acercarse a las cosas exquisitas que les presentamos. And what are the uh, elements, the tools uh, to conceptualize and to understand uh, in order to be able to approach the exquisite things that we are, pre going to, we are presenting to them. Entonces, eh, o escuchamos a los de afuera o yo pienso que la, eh, la generación, mira, la generación de los de 19 a 29 años que trabaja Graciela se llaman los millennials. Uh, the, uh, we have to hear the people from outside or there is nothing to do. The generation from people from uh, millennials. Nine, uh, 19 to 29, 19 to 29 uh, that Graciela is working, uh, the, uh, they are called millennials. Pero las generaciones más jóvenes están aprendiendo y haciendo su vida en YouTube. Yo no sé si eso es bueno o malo. But the younger pero generations es. are working and making their life in YouTube. Uh, I don't know if that's good or bad. No sé si el museo se va a tener que meter a YouTube. I don't know if the museum is have to be in YouTube. 
after this approach? Miguel? I, I want to say only, is I feel uh, bad when uh, we discuss issues about museums like uh, politicians, because is, uh, uh, is for example, a, a politician says we are uh, working for the, uh, our people, uh, we, work, we want to connect better, and I don't know what is, that means. I don't know what it means. I think the issue is how we, which are the tools that we use, really, to connect the museum inside, outside. Because the other issues for me, there are words. That means, which is your connection with, do you really listen to the public? How is your connection? What is your network, your, your strategy? Not, not only the strategy, your operation inside, that you are really connected. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's, I, I, think I like the point of view, but do you have an answer for that? Well, for I, know, I, I, I don't have the answer. I, have, I don't have the answer. But I think that is one of the steps that we are re think in the next in the future of the museums, because, uh, for example, uh, I made some small answers in 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 the work in the museums that I uh, work. For example, the connection of the opinions of the public. For example, I, I realize every time that I want to I don't want to con to to uh, to count the pu the public that comes to the museum. I would like to to count the comeback of the public, the relation between them. And how do you notice this relation? Is uh, about the uh, structure, for example, that we are, uh, uh, we are working in the museum about uh, this decentralization. That means any one of the public that uh, so, uh, writes something, write something, we have in the museum two, 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 two sides. Is the opinion goes directly in the, this decentralization to the area, uh, diffusion, exhibition, and, and all, all, the, all the opinion is going to the, to the uh, project. And the most important issue that we are working, we are working to this connection, I don't know if the answer, is in this decentralization, is the person who uh, to, to, to receive the, uh, uh, the opinion to have to answer. That means the change is how to connect better the areas directly with the public. How to really realize to put this kind, uh, to, 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 to put outside the barrier, and, and is also to, because the other, the other issues is, for example, about uh, uh, the other world is to construct. I think the future in the museum is construct with the community. Construct uh, 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 is, uh, is a construction together, but this construction is, the, the, the tools that the museum put uh, in, in, inside. That's, that's uh, the issue because I was talking about that the first side of the museum is the, how we connect inside. Uh, 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 because for example, it's uh, 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 in, incredible how uh, uh, an exhibition, uh, one department for example, department, I was talking in the morning, the public uh, editorial department, uh, was one of the goals of the department is to make a book, for example, a catalog. But this is the final goal to, to in the museum, in, in this department. Uh, we have steps before, uh, and these steps before these goals that are, for example, that if the uh, uh, articles made by someone are before the, the, uh, be, uh, before, the uh, uh, before the catalog is made, uh, goes to another area and connect to the other area, it's that's, that's the change, and I think, and I think that uh, is how the future is of the museums is which are really the strategies that we are really making, making, and, and, and also maybe I am wrong about the manner of I am working with the, the, with the public, but I think that we should discuss more in an experience, real experience that we are really working in the, in the museums, because the other issue is like the museums, I think that we are t thinking about, are talking about yeah, and, and many years like this I, I, about the society, communication. I, I understand and you made very clear your point. And a second, because Pilar wanted to, uh, to answer something to this before, if you don't mind, and uh, I will give. I try to do it in English, try, I try. Hmm? One example for the thing that Miguel said, 
in, the, in the MUAC, one of the most successful program is that about the art go to home to the people. It, the, the, is the museum out of the museum, for instance. And this program connects a lot with the students and a lot with the people outside of museum. So just quickly, because I think this point really is important to make, and, and I think we do need to talk about specifics also. Um, the first thing is that there are many ways for the public to contribute, but it depends on the comfort of the museum. Some museums are more comfortable with the public contributing and letting go of control, others not. One example, the Walker Art Center in Minneapolis was the first museum to do a crowdsourced exhibition. It was in the, I believe, late 80s, it was called 50-50. And, and, and it was crowdsourced because the public contributed online, they contributed on, in digital kiosk in the museum. The result, in my opinion, was disastrous because what it was was it segregated into half the side of the gallery into the public selections and it was on the wall like Victorian style, very chaotic. And the other side was a curatorial choice and it was very rational and logical. Okay, so there are ways depending on the comfort of the museum. The other thing I just wanted to add really quickly is that if the museum is going to ask the public to contribute and open and participate, then the museum also needs to show by example and be transparent. And Maxwell Anderson is a really good example of, of having the bravery to do this. Um, with the dashboard that he did, uh, the Metropolitan Museum has a wonderful program online called Connections, where they actually show staff members talking about themselves. It, it gives a face to the museum. It's not just an institution. Also, something as simple as your website listing staff. Is there a way to contact staff? Is there a telephone, an email? Something so simple, but the museum needs to show how much it's opening itself up as well. Thank you very much. I, uh, I would put just uh, a last question because we are uh, approaching the time that we have seen being invited uh, to visit a small museum and to have a mezcal uh, with them. So uh, before, Wanda, please. Thank you. First of all, thank you for the stimulating afternoon. And uh, my question actually goes to tomorrow. Um, I think that what I heard today is that the museums today have to address issues that go beyond just museum issues, violence, whatever is happening in society. We heard about sustainability. We must not forget what is happening to our planet, because whatever is happening to our planet will certainly happen to our museums. We also heard the uses of new technologies and the way that not just the uses of new technologies, but the way the internal functioning and external connectivity to the museum and the public, internal public, internal staff, external is very important. And we also heard how a, a global institution in a global society today, like the Museum of um, Americas, had its problems. Now, I want to say that there are other examples of multi-country museums that are quite successful. Uh, Institute of the Arab World functions. And that all brings me now to the next issue. And that is that we have heard mostly talks about museum, public, public, museum, 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 public. But we exist in a much broader context. We exist in a political context. We exist in a environmental context. We exist in other contexts. So my, my desire is to hear more about how we deal with those others because we can't just separate ourselves from the planet and separate ourselves from the politics and separate ourselves from what's going on in society or separate ourselves from foreign things. So whatever you can add and, and, and sort of enlighten me, Hi. I would be delighted to hear that. If Thank you all know me, I think we have had a wonderful first day with a magnificent panel. I thank all of them a lot. Uh, for me, the reflection is also uh, 
we have to dream or we have to apply the tools we have. I think we have to do both. We have to dream, but at the same time, we have to apply the tools and we have to work on the connectivity with the people and on the connectivity with the community. Thank you very much to all of you.